a logical argument uh, for God's existence. Here again, Dr. Stinger simply repeated uh, his statements about the Harvard Hawking model, the vacuum fluctuations, and I showed how the vacuum cannot be extended to past eternity, that there it would be, uh, appear to observation to be an infinitely old universe, and he didn't respond to those points. What about the moral argument for God's existence? Here he merely affirmed that rape is wrong, but you see he gave no explanation on how on atheism or naturalism that would be true. To assert that rape is wrong is merely to affirm my second premise that objective values do exist. The key question is, if there is no God, would there be objective moral values? And here he admits that they wouldn't because of the socio-evolutionary account that he endorses. What about the resurrection of Jesus? He said, I wonder where Dr. Craig is getting his surveys of the, of the uh, literature on this. Look, this is my area of specialization. This is where I did my doctoral work. I know the literature in this field. Indeed, I would be embarrassed if I didn't know the current state of scholarship with regard to the resurrection. Bibliographical essays have been published on things like the empty tomb, the appearances, and the origin of the Christian faith, and 75% of scholars who have written on this subject uh, accept the historicity of the empty tomb. He says, Bart Ehrman uh, says the Gospels are legendary and mythological. Bart Ehrman agrees with all three of the facts that I gave tonight. Listen to what Ehrman says in his uh, lectures from Jesus to Constantine. He says, there are a couple of things that we can say for certain about Jesus after his death. We can say with relative certainty, for example, that he was buried. We also have solid traditions to indicate that women found this tomb empty three days later. This is attested in all of our gospel sources, early and late, so it appears to be a historical datum. And so I think we can say that after Jesus' death, with probably some certainty that he was buried, possibly by this fellow Joseph of Arimathea, and that three days later he appeared not to have been in the tomb. Ehrman agrees with the resurrection appearances and the origin of the Christian faith as well. His objections to the resurrection are not historical. They're philosophical. He doesn't believe in miracles. That's because he doesn't believe in God. He's an atheist. But once you think that the existence of God is possible, you've got to be open to the existence, or the possibility at least, of miracles. And I think in the case of Jesus, it does point the, the evidence in that way. Finally, what about personal experience? Well, again, Dr. Stinger really hasn't undercut this. I, God is real in my life. He's changed my life. Unless I have some good reason to think that I'm psychologically deluded, it seems to me I'm perfectly rational to believe in God. On Dr. Stinger's view, everyone who claims to have an experience of God has got to be psychologically deluded in some way, and I don't think that there's any good reason to think that. So in summary, then, I think we've got good reasons to think that God exists. We've only heard, I think, weak reasons to think that God does not exist. And for that reason, I am enthusiastically a Christian theist. Okay, let me try to just make a, a quick summary of, of, of my arguments against what Dr. Craig has argued. As far as the ontological argument, it's, a lot, it's, it's based on logic. Logic is based on uh, the uh, premises that you make. It's only as good as the premises that you make. Otherwise, uh, it's of no value whatsoever in telling you anything about reality. Now, this whole business of nothing, I argued that uh, that we have very good physical reasons to understand how uh, something can come from, from nothing because there's a natural tendency in the universe and all physical processes to go from the uh, more uh, complicated state, the, the more uh, the simpler state to the more complicated state, the more complex state. The natural tendency uh, of water is to move from, from uh, a liquid, from a vapor to a liquid to ice, increasing its structure as you go along. This is common throughout of science. So the idea that the the uh, universe could have come from nothing and, and uh, naturally developed complexity is something that's uh, 
well understood and can be and modeled and so on. There's a cosmological argument about the universe uh, uh, having, to have a, having to have a beginning. Again, there are still scenarios out there by, by which the universe didn't have a beginning. They're all published in peer-reviewed journals. And uh, it just it cannot be proven that the universe had to have a beginning. Uh, the moral argument, uh, uh, it's, it's again just a, an assertion on his part that it has to come from God. I don't know why the moral argument can't come from, uh, why our morality can't be uh, something that we ourselves have developed over the years. Certainly it doesn't come from the Bible. Uh, the, uh, there isn't uh, anything in, in the uh, New Testament that has, wasn't said. Uh, uh, hundreds of years before Christ, the Golden Rule uh, was presented by Confucius and by uh, Buddha, and uh, Jesus himself was, was not a tremendously moral person by, by what you read in the Bible about him. Uh, I mean, for example, he, he had uh, no particular regard for the poor, he certainly supported slavery, supported the uh, subjugation of women, and, and so on. So the Bible is not aware if, if people get morals from God, uh, if the Bible is not the place where they, where they get them, then you can uh, read the Bible yourself once in a while, not just what uh, you find uh, in Sunday school classes, but, but read it uh, completely and you'll see what I'm talking about. And again, on the, the resurrection, uh, it was, it was uh, the stuff that was written about the resurrection was, was uh, years later. Uh, these claims that uh, that the, uh, the scholars uh, uh, all accept these facts as his, his, historical. Again, I have to refer to Clark Herman, who says that the majority of historians do not believe in the uh, accuracy of those initial stories. So. Uh, and again, the personal experiences. I don't deny that people have an inner experience of God. Uh, it's just whether it's, it's really uh, something supernatural or whether it's just something in their own heads. And until they come up with some kind of evidence, again, I'm a scientist, I, I need to see the evidence. I don't see any evidence uh, that uh, uh, that experience isn't just in their heads uh, and, and has nothing to do with, with anything beyond them. What's going on in the brain? Well, finally, suppose, let's suppose that I'm wrong. And on the day of judgment, I'm called before God to answer for myself. Here's what I plan to tell God. <laughs> How dare you ask me, God, to justify my life, you who created a world in which you've imposed great suffering <laughs> on your creatures, you who sent earthquakes and tsunamis to kill not terrorists or despots or child abusers, but instead hundreds of thousands of the poorest, most underprivileged people in the world. You kill the thousands of children every day from hunger. You refuse to relieve the suffering of the dying. You, refuse you force animals to kill each other to survive. You didn't have to do this, God. With your unlimited power, you could have made the universe a universe with no pain or death. The universe you created was certainly big enough, vast enough, if you loved humans so much, why did you wait, uh, confine us to this tiny planet and wait nine billion years to produce us? You could have made it so we uh, could live everywhere, anywhere, even in space. All of this was, was within your control, God. You could have made a wonderful world for your creatures, but you didn't. And so it's you, God, not I, who have everything to answer for. Thank you. from the audience. We'll ask that our uh, speakers move over to uh, the table to my left. We ask that you write out your question ahead of time. Please ask no more than one question, clearly and swiftly. 
and keep it under 30 seconds, please. <clears throat> Offer no statements. Please walk down to the front of the aisle where a queue will be formed as you await your turn to ask a question. When you ask your question, be prepared to elaborate or repeat yourself if either speaker requests it. Once you have successfully asked your question, please return to your seat. Again, this is not a time to argue with the speakers, this is a time to ask a short question and allow them to answer it. To ensure that as many people as possible can ask a question, there will be no follow-up questions or rebuttals. All questions for Dr. Craig will be asked from this microphone to your left. All questions for Dr. Steyer will be asked from this microphone to your right. I will then rotate between questions. The speaker to whom the question is directed will have three minutes to respond, then the other speaker will have one minute to respond to the same question. Our first question will be directed toward Dr. Steyer. Good evening, Dr. Steyer. My question is if you would agree with this way to resolve the apparent contradiction between your view of the scholarly consensus on Jesus' resurrection uh, with Dr. Craig's understanding. Okay? Um, your understanding, um, especially regarding uh, Dr. Berman, is that is that the majority of New Testament scholars don't see the Gospels as generally reliable. That that's a general statement about the scope of what the Gospels record. Whereas Dr. Craig is being very specific about certain facts, especially the empty tomb, the appearance stories, uh, and the origin of Christianity itself that you're making a general statement, and he is making a very specific statement where, where the, the views of various scholars have been recorded. Go ahead and ask your question this time, please. So is that the, is that the, is that the uh, best way in your view to resolve the apparent conflict? No, I don't think I was making uh, just general statements. I was referring specifically to the, the empty tomb story uh, and uh, that uh, we don't even hear about it in, in the New Testament until 40, 50 years later uh, with the, in the Gospels. It doesn't appear uh, in, in Paul, for example. And, and so, uh, and as far as I know, what I know from, from my own uh, reading of the scholarship, there's, uh, there's a lot of doubt out there among scholars about the, the historicity of it. Besides, if even if it was historical, uh, it seems to me that uh, it's still possible that you know, there are more parsimonious explanations, like somebody <laughs> stealing the body. Dr. Craig thinks that's very unlikely, but I think uh, it, it seems to me far more likely, especially since there's no evidence uh, until years and years later what really happened, and we have contradictory stories in the Gospels that, Put them side by side, and we see that they're contradictory. So uh, I, I, uh, I, I maintain that, uh, the, as far as I know, the, the scholarship, the scholarship there, does not support that as good evidence for the existence of, of God. That's great. Well, I think you've tried to be charitable uh, to Dr. Stenger and putting a, a good spin on this. Uh, but the fact of the matter is he's simply mistaken about what the majority of New Testament scholars think with respect to these three facts. Remember, I quoted Barb Ehrman himself, that Ehrman accepts all three of these facts. As for people like John Dominic Crossan, Gerhard Ludemann, Marcus Borg, I've debated all of these fellas, and these, these uh, debates are available in book form as well as on DVD, and none of them challenge my statement that the, this is the majority view. You would think they would say, no, no, that's not right. I, I would present, uh, you know, significant uh, opinion. None of them in, in our debates challenged me when I said that their view represented a minority of scholars, about 25%. Next question. First off, I want to thank you guys for uh, using logic and reason in this <laughs> argument. Discussing something like this can get very... Go ahead and speak into the microphone, please. It can get very contentious, so for using logic and reason...